This is the Venus flytrap, or as it's known in some areas, the Capensis. These are native to North and South Carolina in the USA. They get their name because the leaves somewhat resemble a mouth that is constantly open in anticipation of food. But what exactly are these feeding on? Are they actually carnivorous? You're watching Wild But True with Malcolm Walker? And if so, what's their preferred meal? It's a snap trap, which uses trigger hairs inside its mouth to detect when an insect has entered its mouth and then snaps shut its mouth very quickly. This happens when the trigger hairs are touched twice within a short amount of time. The first touch opens the mouth slightly, and the second touch within the time frame closes the mouth fully. At. This is a great adaptation. Because it prevents the trap from closing when something small like a leaf falls into the mouth by accident, this ensures that the trap only closes when something big enough to eat gets into the mouth. But what exactly is this mouth looking to eat? Well, anything that enters the mouth gets eaten. Do. So that could mean flies, ants, and other small insects. The mouth will digest acids and absorb the nutrition from them. But just because they can eat anything doesn't mean that they want to eat anything. They prefer to eat flies and other insects that are around the same size as the mouth itself. Anything smaller than that gets away unharmed, and anything bigger struggles to fit into the mouth and therefore is uneaten. A lot of people have misconceptions about how Venus flytraps work. Perhaps because of movies or TV shows where a beetle or some other large insect gets caught and then digested instantly. But in reality, it takes much longer for a fly to be digested. It usually takes about two days for a fly to be completely digested by the Venus flytrap. During this time, the fly may struggle to free itself from the trap, but it will become weaker and weaker until it eventually stops moving. After that, the Venus flytrap will begin to secrete digested acids and absorb the nutrition from the fly. Venus flytraps are not only picky eaters, but they are also very sensitive plants. If you want to keep one as a pet, there are a few things that you need to know. First, they need to be kept in an area that receives bright and direct light. If they receive too much direct sunlight, their leaves will turn red and the plant will die. Second, they do not need to be watered very often. In fact, overwatering is one of the most common ways that people kill their Venus flytraps. If you want to water your plant, simply take a spray bottle and mist the soil. Do not put the plant itself under the water, as this can damage the roots. Third, you should only feed your plant insects that you have caught yourself. Do not buy insects at the store and feed them to your Venus flytrap. Also, never use fertilizers on your Venus flytrap. The insects that it eats are already a source of fertilizer and your plant will end up burning itself if you try to fertilize it. Now, as we said earlier, there are different types of Venus flytraps, and one of the most popular is the red or poodles. This type of flytrap has red hairs inside its mouth, and when these hairs are touched, the mouth snaps shut. You may think that this would startle insects and prevent them from entering the mouth, but it actually does the opposite. The red hairs are very sensitive, and even the smallest insect flying past will cause them to close. This means that the poodles are able to catch a wider variety of insects than other types of flytraps. However, they are also more likely to trap things that they don't want to eat, such as leaves and twigs. When this happens, the poodles will slowly open back up until the unwanted object is no longer inside the mouth. We hope you enjoyed learning about the Venus flytrap, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe so you can learn about more amazing plants. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.